They've done it. Ace Attack has actually made something new. The Ace Attack Gen 6 pump and cooling solution is now coming out and it's going first to Corsair who have a new H150i Pro, this one right here, 360 millimeter radiator with the Gen 6 pump and also an H115i Pro in the same 280 millimeter family as before, just with the new pump and new fans. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the H150i just before CES as well. So after CES, we're planning to do a teardown of at least one of them. Stay tuned for that, but for now we can get through the review. Before that, this video is brought to you by Leon Lee and their 550X and 330 cases. The 550X is a $180 mid-tower case with tempered glass on all panels. It's got three RGB LED fans positioned in the front, each of which has a metal frame housing and an open interior design. If you prefer a cheaper option, the 330 is $100 and comes without fans and is what we recommended most heavily in one of our recent case reviews. Learn more at the link in the description below. For the absolute basics, the coolers are 360mm for the H150i and 280mm for the 115i. Both are demarcated with a pro suffix. The coolers also come with maglev fans without the RGB LEDs or any LEDs at all, so a bit cheaper than the normal magnetic levitation fans. And other than that, the focus is primarily on silence. There are not a whole lot of changes to the Ace Attack cooling solution outright. Most of the changes involve customizations to the PCB inside that controls the LEDs, for instance. There's another change in the cold plate. It's a couple millimeters smaller than the old cold plate, which is the first change to a cold plate that Ace Attack has done in years. More than I can remember at this point. So that's a, a somewhat major change for them making the cold plate smaller. They also made the pump housing smaller, the block itself, which means that really, uh, aside from visual changes, maybe you'll have fewer clearance concerns, although those were never that much of a concern to begin with. The mounting mechanism is slightly changed, mostly for the better. Now, instead of having multiple drilled through holes for Intel plates, it's just got the sliding setup. So you can accommodate basically any size and Strictly from a modding standpoint, as we do all of those hybrid mods, for example, it makes sense that this kind of bracket solution would be better because you can accommodate things that it's not meant to accommodate, like video cards. So that's a, a small change that's not as significant as some of the others, like the ML fan inclusion. Tubes are coming out of the side now, so it's back to the way it was in Gen 4 instead of coming out of the top in Gen 5 for Corsair coolers and they're mounted to 90 degree L brackets. The fans can spin down to zero RPM. When they do so, they will slave to the liquid temperature rather than CPU temperature, for instance. And so following liquid temperature, they uh, will spin up at 45 degrees Celsius, which is something we'll talk about more at the end of the video. Besides all these, the prices, the H150i Pro is $170, making it one of the most expensive closed loop liquid coolers on the market and the H115i Pro is a little bit cheaper than that. It comes in at $140 for the 280 millimeter solution. Most of the marketing for these focuses on noise, so we'll be focusing on noise normalized performance for the most part, meaning that we are normalizing the noise level of all of the coolers we have on that particular chart for 40 decibels. That is system noise in a room with a 26 dBA noise floor, so of course the Noise levels are always going to be a bit different than what the manufacturer reports because they're measuring probably in an anechoic chamber or something similar to that. So we're targeting 40 dBA for noise normalization and then we'll have the flat out performance as well. Let's get into that for test methodology. As always, you can check the link in the description below for the article. That'll tell you how we tested it and give you a written summary of what we're about to go through. Let's start our thermals with flat out performance and then move on to noise normalized performance testing. Our focus here is fans and pumps at max speed, though we do have lower RPM numbers present. We'll give it noise normalized tests more focus in a moment. For now, we're seeing the Corsair H150i right around levels of the H115i V2, not the new one, at 1500 RPM, or the Ice Bear 420 with the high RPM EVGA fans rather than the stock ones. Keep in mind that test variance places everything within the 34.5 to 36.5 degree range as functionally equal surrounding the H150i Pro. Also keep in mind that appreciable differences are lacking at this point 
as it's rare to gain significantly from an extra one or two degrees reduction in temperatures. GPUs are perhaps the primary exception to this, particularly in high overclock scenarios. Regardless, the Corsair H150i maintains an average idle temperature and sits toward the upper quarter of coolers. Because the H150i focuses more on operating quietly, thermal performance isn't a leader until normalizing for other coolers. Most of the thermal performance you're seeing thus far can be attributed to limited thermal gains generationally in the Asetek solution, with Corsair's medium speed fans contributing to the rest of the performance differential. Setting the pump to quiet mode, by the way, results in significantly warmer temperatures. The H150i moves down to 49.9 degrees Celsius over ambient for load temperature, or 12 degrees for idle. This is an increase of 14 degrees from the high speed pump and is repeatable in testing. To be fair though, quiet does significantly reduce pump speed. The reported rate falls from 2800 RPM to around 1100 RPM. Looking at noise normalized performance at 40 dBA, the Corsair cooler is able to leverage its larger 360 millimeter radiator size, keeping temperatures to about 36.8 degrees over ambient load. This also lands Corsair near the top of the charts here, and it's within margin of error of our X62 and Celsius S36 measurements. These units are all functionally equal in our testing. Corsair is able to spin down to a zero RPM operating mode, giving it a bit of an upper hand here. If no load is on the system, it can spin down to zero and sustain idle or simple browser-like processing without spinning up, at least until liquid hits 45. For full system noise with passively cooled components other than the CPU and a noise floor of 26 dBA, the Corsair unit measured out at around 43 dBA on our meter. The only other thing in the system making noise is a 23% blower fan from a 980Ti, which makes basically zero noise, at least until the low end of cooler RPMs. This cooler is one of the quietest when operating at its maximum speed while still retaining some of its thermal performance. It's certainly not the most impressive cooler on the bench, particularly in price to performance value, but it's a mid-pack competitor that performs average thermally for its size, or above average for noise. The pump is responsible for making a good deal of that noise, by the way, and more sensitive users will likely want to operate on either balanced or quiet profiles. The full speed profile makes a noticeable and audible ticking, just like some of the older Asetek pumps. This will be somewhat obfuscated by cases, but not entirely. It just depends on how sensitive you are to that specific type of noise. It is possible, of course, that other system fans could spin up to a point where the pump noise becomes inaudible. The technology underneath the cooler hasn't changed all that much. It's mostly LED changes and then some small changes like returning the tubes to be 90 degree right angle brackets off the side of the pump housing. Other than that, you've got a slight cold plate size difference, some new LEDs, new fans going to the ML series instead, which is definitely one of the benefits on the noise front for Corsair, but they are kind of weak when it comes to flat out performance. But to be fair, their target isn't flat out performance, it's silence. So that's what they're going for here. Other items of note, you'll get about a two degree improvement with manual spread of, uh, of thermal paste on an X99 sized platform. So when we did our testing, we used Asetek thermal paste versus Asetek thermal paste when it was applied in the sort of half dollar size amount on the cold plate. And we did see performance uplift by shifting over to the way we do all of our testing, which is manually spreading the thermal compound. So there's a bit of a performance gain there. It doesn't cover the entire IHS of larger CPUs and you could benefit a bit. It'll still operate perfectly fine without manual spread but it's something to keep in mind. Zero RPM mode, waiting for 45 degree liquid temperatures is a bit interesting because part of the whole deal with this cooler when we were speaking with Corsair and Asetek at Computex uh, last year now, was that the Gen 6 pump is supposed to hopefully be stepping away from leaning entirely on liquid temperature and lean instead a bit more on CPU temperature, for example. So, Liquid temperature is a bit funny. Depending on how good the CPU is at transferring its heat to the liquid cooler, the liquid temperature could be quite low compared to the temperature of the CPU. A great example of this would be a 7700K overclocked where you could easily get into the 90s Celsius for your core temperature 
And liquid temperature on an X62 280mm cooler with max fan speeds would be sitting at low 30s. So big differential there. And of course, if you turn the fans off completely, liquid temperature will increase. We've seen it. And you never want to exceed 60 on these Asa Tech coolers. So 45 is a good point to toggle on for the Corsair unit. It's just a question of, does it turn on when you need it to? And for the most part, the answer is yes. It's just going to depend partially on the CPU that you're using because the transfer between the die to the IHS, to the cooler, can have some latency uh, with regard to the thermal interface between all of those. So it might be a bit latent on spinning back up, but you're not gonna lose that much. You might like maybe start getting into the 90s and if you're overclocking, you shouldn't be using a zero RPM solution anyway. So these are all the, the things to consider. Overall, as a product, the H150i Pro is priced towards the top of the market. It's right up there with the Kraken X62. The X62 is, has been one of the most expensive, sometimes almost just not really in a worthy way. It's held that price for far too long in the 150, 160 range. So this comes in above that. It's a bit bigger. Uh, it has different RGB LED options if you prefer these. And that's really the primary difference other than the size, which is the biggest driver, but the thermal performance is not all that different. It just comes down to what can you fit in your case. And of course, if you put aftermarket fans on them, that changes a bit because you've got 360 versus 280. So it's not bad in terms of value proposition. It's just expensive, which is fair. The H115i Pro is much more palatable at $140. That's around where the EVGA CLC 280 originally shipped. I think that was 130. And the H115i non-Pro used to be about 130-ish as well. So 140 seems fair for the H115i Pro, though we don't have numbers for it today. So the pricing there seems definitely a bit more palatable than the 150i Pro. This one's not bad. It's just you really have to want that Corsair brand, uh, the pump plate and RGB LEDs on it, and then the rest is all the size of the radiator, basically. And there's valid reasons to want that radiator size. So we'll leave that up to you. Uh, the product itself, we have not found any significant flaws with it at this time. So nothing really to complain about in a big way there. That's always a good thing. We will be taking it apart to look at the Gen 6 cooler and see what else has changed. But other than that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. So you can find links for the article review in the description below alongside links to the product whenever it goes up for sale if you're interested in checking it out further. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a mod mat like this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.